it's our first uh, preview that you folks can try out of uh, something that's been uh, that we've been working on for the last few months. Um, and uh, and so what I'll do is I'll I'll set the stage up with a little bit of an introduction. Um, I'll do a quick demo, um, and and then I'll kind of hand it over to the crew to look at some specific user journeys and some specific workflows uh, that we'd love to show you. So um, to kind of set context a little bit, over the last um, over, over the last few months, if you folks have been tracking what we've been doing with V3 and DDN, uh, we've been talking about a fair number of things, right? We've been talking about kind of um, immutable builds um, so that from a CICD point of view, you can have every single change gives you an atomic kind of build, a URL that you can hit. Um, we've been talking about auto-scale, edge and multi-region, the, the idea of being able to have high availability in GitOps from day zero, right? Stuff that uh, we know is a little bit painful uh, to set up with um, Hasura V2 um, on, on, on that kind of having more kind of complex workflows and complex CICD and stuff like that. Um, I, I think you folks have also seen, if you've been tracking the community calls, the new console visualizations and the new operational dashboard stuff as well. Now, all of these things are massive, absolutely massive enhancements. Um, but at its core, and that's kind of the theme of our of the community call today, and what we'd love for you folks to try out as well. At its core, the biggest shift that we've done with DDN, and DDN is what we call kind of our, our cloud product, V3, which is the engine underneath it, um, is that developer experience of being able to build a graph and then to build an API that can access that graph, right? So, so that developer experience and the shift in that developer experience um, is, um, is, is one of the most kind of critical aspects of, of our work um, and what we've been doing over the last few months. This is not just a significant kind of, it's fairly different from the way that um, we would approach building a graph and building an API on V2, but it's also very different from what you would do uh, in general when you're building an API. Um, and the, the experience, the correctness that you can get, the speed that you can get, um, the uh, rigor that you can get and how you build and the API that you get is um, uh, orders of magnitude higher uh, than what you get in, in building another way, right? And that is kind of central to what you want to do uh, and what we're doing here with DDM. Now, um, again, if you're familiar with Hasura V1, V2, you you kind of go into the console and you remember, and you know that uh, underneath it Hasura v2 would be backed by a metadata database right and um, and when you kind of use the ui to build stuff it was super quick it was awesome um, and especially when you're learning a new thing you'll be able to kind of get started with it super quickly right and what was happening in the background was that metadata declarative configuration was getting modified and it was get, getting updated inside the metadata database now this flow, while it made it super easy to um, um, understand something new and complicated very well, it did make complex CI/CD operations a little bit harder. So today, this experience that we're looking at is at its core a departure from having the requirement of needing a metadata database as a backing store. Um, and that experience has changed in the way that you work with metadata fundamentally, and that has allowed us to uh, create not just amazing console experience, but also an amazing code force experience in the way that you'd interact uh, with Hasura. So with that, I'm gonna do like a quick uh, two minute demo uh, to see what that feels like. Um, and then we'll go into some of the detailed um, experiences of building with, uh, you know, building with Postgres, building with TypeScript and stuff like that. So let me share my screen and let us type in you can you can start with the console to kind of always do that quick start with Hasura, but for all of you um, and for most of us who've been using Hasura v1 v2, um, this is what that experience looks like if we get started with um, uh, with just the CLI and with just VS Code. So I kind of go in here. Um, I have the Hasura CLI installed. Uh, let's go in and initialize a project. So create a new project. This sets up a new project for me. Um, and the metadata is structured slightly differently. Um, and I have a bunch of things set up. I have a new project set up as well. The first thing that we'll do here is we'll go ahead and add a data source. Um, and so I go ahead here, let me uh, run this. And 
and uh, on the docs, uh, there's a sample Postgres URL that you can use as well. Um, so and hey, time the URL, we can take the two off of the perfect. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there's, there's uh, one typo that we found already. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and so this gets added, and now this gets added here. Let's take a look at what that looks like in uh, in code. And so when I go in here and open up VS Code, you'll notice that um, we've done this amazingly creative thing of uh, having a slightly different extension. Uh, it's not, uh, you'll have YAML, which is for the YAML files. And then there are things that uh, a sort of VS Code extension can look at. And these are uh, .html files. And so we call them .html files because they're essentially just YAML. But also because um, Hasura can, uh, the VS Code extension and Hasura's language server, LSP, uh, which is a big part of the developer experience, um, it needs that extension so that it can kind of work with, uh, with these files. Um, so I have, I have that kind of file added here. Um, let's go up and set up something like a watch. And so what the watch does um, is and just very similar to any other experience of using watch. Um, you can keep kind of working on the metadata. Um, and as you're working with your metadata, um, we're continuously seeing and we will continuously see changes happen live on uh, on our project, right? And so I can go in here. Let's go to the console URL that we have here. Right, and I don't have anything on my uh, on my GraphQL API yet. Let me head to VS Code. You'll see, um, and this is kind of the experience uh, that that we want to kind of build, which is the idea that once you have your directory structure set up and you're starting to scaffold some of these initial files, exactly what you would have done in Hasura V2 in the console, where you would have had seen you know, this kind of catalog, the introspection, you would have seen existing tables, you would have created new tables and you would have seen those tables come in. Um, what the VS Code extension will do is it kind of prompt you and tell you that there are certain operations that you can run, um, for example, to track a table and bring that up into your API and transform it and bring that up into your API and stuff like that. So a lot of what um, we were doing on the console is now kind of happening inside your IDE, I'm starting up with VS Code, but with LSP and stuff, it should work across other IDs as well. I think a bunch of our uh, folks have it on their backlog to bring that into their favorite IDE. Um, but, but with VS Code, for example, you'll be able to see kind of how, how that works and how you're able to bring that to your API. And so let me take a quick example of bringing a user model in here. And so I'll create a user model explicitly. I'll do and I'll bring in a particular collection here, right? And this is me kind of creating that user model, looking at all of the different fields that I have, uh, the different permissions that I can set up, relationships, all of that kind of goes into this particular file here. And as soon as I hit save, uh, I'll be able to see uh, that come up live here on, uh, on my GraphQL API, right? And then I can start kind of going around here and playing around with it. Um, this same experience, um, works um, with uh, V3 and with DDN, and we've kind of brought that to TypeScript as well, right? So for example, I can go ahead and um, set up a fairly convenient way of starting to write custom code, which is which is really useful and was one of, one of the big pain points and one of those kind of much needed things when we had uh, with Hasura V1, Hasura V2, right? Where that experience required you to set up a separate service altogether. Um, you had to run and host action separately. And now we've kind of made that a more integrated part of Hasura itself. Um, again, built on kind of fairly extensible foundation, right? So I can go in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a TypeScript connector. Um, and again, I'll just set it up on watch. And as soon as I add kind of the types of connector, we'll see that uh, there's some a scaffold function here that we can kind of keep modifying. But as you kind of write these TypeScript functions, the type signature of these TypeScript functions will automatically kind of show up as the right models or commands, um, in this case, commands 
uh, that will then show up in your GraphQL API, right? And so, for example, um, when I'm uh, when I'm working on a hello world kind of function, I'm seeing that um, there is a procedure called hello that is now available, and if I were to track this procedure, I would see that resolver uh, come up on our GraphQL project as well. Um, and making those changes um, here live would then impact. Uh, my GraphQL server live as well. And this is integrated with both local development and this is available for you when you're going to be doing, uh, when you're deploying this as well. And this this is, uh, this is allows the entire developer experience of how, when you're building that graph out or you're adding custom resolvers to the graph to happen entirely um, via code if you so desire. Um, and of course, um, there's, uh, on the console, significant enhancements around kind of being able to visualize that graph and understand what is happening in that graph that we'll uh, that we'll see in a bit. Um, the the as 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 we look at as we look at the rest of the demos uh, today, I'm not going to take too much more time because we have a whole bunch of things to uh, to go ahead with. But as you look at the demos today um, and um, uh, start playing around with Astro uh, with DDN, a, a few of the things that We'd love to work with um, folks who are trying out the alpha is especially on kind of this developer experience and, and working on that over the coming weeks. There are a few critical building blocks. Um, you'll notice there are contextual code actions, which is what allows VS Code to show you the right actions to do at the right time. Um, there's semantic autocomplete. So when you're looking at relationships or permissions, your VS code is going to kind of give you this autocomplete experience that is the sim that is similar to the form kind of experience that you had on the console. So you're going to get kind of correct autocomplete, the right relationships. You're going to choose a model and you're going to get the right fields and autocomplete for that particular model that you're building a relationship with and stuff like that. And then of course, there's feedback that you're getting from the build system and from the compiler that is continuously telling you whether your metadata is correct or whether your metadata is incorrect. Um, and, um, and, and eventually, whether you're, you made a change that your API is going to break or your API is not going to break and stuff like that. Um, and so on those kind of building blocks of developer experience, we'd love kind of, um, as you try it out, we'd love your feedback there. Um, and as we gear up towards a production release in January, um, hammering that out uh, and tightening that up is, uh, is the highest priority for us. We'll share a link to our Discord um, if you don't have it already. Um, there's a DDN launch uh, channel that we'll be discussing on the product and the engineering team will be hanging out there over the coming weeks. Um, and as you uh, start um, stress testing us out, uh, we'd love to kind of keep interacting with that. Um, a quick note on, uh, because it's come up a bunch of times on folks thinking about open source and how open source works with D3 and DDN. Um, Hustler DDN, um, we call it the data delivery network. It's kind of like a cloud flare, but for data um, is the way that we think about it. And that shows up in a variety of ways. It means that, for example, pricing is not dependent on usage, on infrastructure usage at all. Um, pricing is just dependent on the number of models you have, um, because that's, there's a lot of the infrastructure work that we've done to make sure that it doesn't matter what scale you use that. Um, but that DDN product is built on top of our V3 engine. Um, and uh, the bits of Hasura V3 and DDN that are open source are more than what we had in V2. So the entire data plane, V3 engine, all of our connectors, the Postgres connector and the various connectors, even to commercial databases, um, connected to different programming, connectors to different programming languages. We have a TypeScript connector, we have connectors to different programming languages. Um, eventually, all of these connectors are all open source as well. Um, the LSP, the language server, um, that is going to be, that is going to help you do the autocomplete and talk to Hasura, that is also open source so that you can kind of interact with that system. The uh, control plane, uh, which is uh, the system that generates those build URLs and um, automatically deploys them for you and scales them for you and stuff like that, that is the portion that is cloud hosted um, and maintained by us. So that is closed source. Uh, but the rest of Asura is uh, on the data plane side is entirely open source, which means that if you want to self-host, for example, you'll easily be able to take that metadata, say you're using the console, um, you're using VS code, whatever you're doing, you can try it out, get your metadata right, and then you can even self-host it if you wanted to or run it in a non-cloud environment, not run by Hasura Cloud if you needed to. Um, 
we'll get into more details. Um, we haven't um, open sourced some of these repositories yet. Some of the connectors are open source, um, but we're adding contributing guides uh, to all of those repositories and we'll share that across in uh, pretty soon and so that you'll have access to um, and we'll be able to join us in um, looking at the code base and contributing there um, and, and kind of continuing our engagement on GitHub. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to the rest of the team. I've taken far more than my time, uh, but we'll get into more of the details with uh, what uh, you can do with uh, Postgres, with TypeScript, and with multiple databases at the same time and what that experience looks like. So we're going to see a lot of cool things here in just a moment. And Tanmaya, I'm going to kick you off stage in just a moment, but I'm going to say one thing. I'm going to make a bet real quick because this morning was my first time and I got to see Watch in action. And I feel like maybe, I don't know, six months a year from now, we're going to go, how did we build APIs before this? Uh, and obviously I'm biased, but you know, that, that's how I'm feeling after uh, this developer experience. It's pretty awesome. Thanks, Arthur. 